Hi and welcome to today's live chapter reading of Brink of Denial by Sonia Jesus and Cam Johns, courtesy of Itsy Bitsy Book Bits. Prologue, Something Blue. Dating, 11 years ago. We almost didn't make it to the bed. The thought rises to the surface as I slowly lift off the mattress, careful not to disturb her. She's wrapped around the bedding, like the sheet hog she's always been, and doesn't even stir when my thigh, thigh bangs onto the nightstand, shaking the girly shit on there. Layers of her clothing lie scattered on the floor. I backtrack our steps down to the bedroom floor, smiling my ass off while the memories play out in my mind. Pants had come off the second the door shut. After that, it's all a blur. Picking up my jeans, I pluck myself from my back pocket and check the time. It's almost 11 and I'm tempted to take the black velvet box over to Mila and anticipate the proposal. Everything's all set for tomorrow, but I hate leaving things pending. Two of the notifications on my phone are from her brother, who's been helping me plan the engagement, warning me not to blow all his hard work by blurting it out tonight. Nico's stupid ass comments bring a wicked grin to my lips. The fucker knows me too damn well. Me. I've waited for years, what's a dozen hours? Within a minute, Nico replies, to you that can mean 20 bodies and a mass burial site, the bloody massacre on the eve of love. Me, dick. I don't plan on murdering anyone tonight, just locking your sister down. Nico, pfft, that's as romantic as you're ever gonna get. Me, I'm more a get out of my face kind of guy. Nico, I'll meet you at the restaurant tomorrow. Me? Aren't you helping her? Nico? Yeah, I'll stop by to pick her up. It takes me a minute to figure out his roundabout message. He won't be home for the evening. About damn time. It's hard to believe this kid is the same age as my little brother and two years younger than me. Me? Look at you losing those shy bits. Nico's scrawny for a mobster, but he's been growing into himself pumping iron at the gym and working at his dad's construction business. He'd grow a little faster if it weren't for all the timid around me as friends. Nico, fuck off. Me, go ruin yourself then get back to me. The kid's too uptight. I toss the phone on Mila's desk and scan the room. Where are my fucking boxers? There's a draft creeping up my balls and it's making my thighs twitch. Next to her expensive looking bra and shredded lace thong, I spot my black shorts, then toss the tattered pieces into her trash bin. After putting my jeans on, I fashion the holster strap around my ankle and catch a glimpse of the baby blue material from the corner of my eye. I reach in for the shredded panties. Would it be too tacky for this to be her something blue? Probably get me punched in the eye, I tell myself. She's feisty. Not the typical mafia princess. Just as I'm about to discard them, I notice the Trans Oceana emblem on a piece of printer paper. Within seconds, it's in my hand and all the words have been read. A receipt for a plane ticket. Leaving tomorrow at 10. A hot as fuck ball of fire swells inside my chest and spreads through me in intense swoops. One glance back at Mila sleeping peacefully in her bed and I'm huffing air like it can put out the blaze on my skin. My attempt to calm the fuck down comes out in wide strides around the room. The floor blurs into specks until my eyes zone in her clothes. Her phone had slid out of those tight jeans when I straddled her legs around my waist. Entering the passcode, I unlock it and find nothing in her inbox. Not one mention of leaving, but the ticket's in her name. I drop the phone and head into her closet. Her suitcases are empty. There are fewer clothes in here, fewer of the items she loved. My mind dredges up the memories of tonight. Milana Lombardi had been ravenous tonight, insisting we stay home, clinging to me like a cat hooking its claws to a wall, latching on to keep from falling. Sex was different, hungrier, greedier, as if she were making memories with every movement, most of which was done on the bottom level of her split room. Clever, she didn't want to go up the steps because that's where she's hiding something. I take the steps two by two and reach her side within seconds. Carefully I bunch the covers in my hand and bend down to eye level. The handle of a brand new suitcase stares back at me. 
The floor falls beneath me and I shut my eyes, unwilling to see the evidence before me. Grasping at what ifs like a girl, when the beast inside me is urging for confrontation, I yank the luggage out with little regard for silence. I want her to fucking wake up and explain this shit. Tell me it's empty. I get on my knees, unzip the bag and throw it open. The tough exterior plastic thuds against the hardwood floor. Neatly packaged items destroyed when I rummage through them. Each one blatant evidence that she'd planned to leave. Each one a reason for me to hate her. What are you doing, she asks, her pitch way too high for someone who I want to annihilate right now. Looking for your fucking brain, I growl back as I empty her clothes onto the floor, makeup case and all. Or your fucking heart. I chuck her colourful powder case at her nightstand, eyeing her cold eyes with my embers. Someone who loves doesn't leave. I seethe in my own thoughts and heave the suitcase flipping it in the air. Stop it, Dane. I hear her shift, the sheets moving along with her. Let me explain. Explain then. I can't even look the bitch in the face. In the outer pocket of the suitcase, I find her passport, the driver's license clipped inside. I got a modelling job. Congratulations. I get up and remove the lighter from my back pocket, concealing it in my hand so she can't stop me. If I burn this shit, she can't go anywhere. So what? Just pick up and walk out of this life we've been making because you're bored? I'm not bored, Dane. Yes, you are. I kick the crumpled receipt towards the stairs, lining it up for the fire. How do you get bored knowing that our bodies rotting under the foyer or lining the Hudson? Bodies the men in your life put there. I scoff and use the passport to point at her. Don't pretend that you had nothing to do with that. You're as much part of this world as I am. Ever think that's a problem? She kneels on her bed and slides forward to the edge of the mattress, getting closer. I never thought there was a problem. Pleading eyes ask me not to go there. But I do. You can't be a model here. New York's right around the corner. She clutches the material of the sheets between her delicate fingers, bunching at her hips to stand. Without walking over to me, she raises her eyes to mine. Tears well in the corner, dicing my heart into tasty, tiny pieces. Not one not associated with all of this. All of this, I shout. Considering all of this will be mine one day, you mean. All of me. A swallow drowns her comment, takes her breath and loosens the salty drops. She exhales my name on a whisper. A fucking dying whisper. Men don't tremble, but I'm shaking. Not sure if it's the anger coursing through my veins or if it's the earthquake happening in my heart, but not an inch of me is still. I've never felt weak and capable of breaking through a cement wall at the same time, not even when mum died. Dane, she mutters out, shut up. The words explode out of my mouth and my fists clench at my sides. I'd never lay a hand on her and she knows it. That's why she steps closer. Stay where you are, Mila. My body isn't my own right now. She shakes her head, yet heeds my warning. The need for a safety zone has me stepping back against the railing of her split-level bedroom, the receipt at my feet. The evidence weighing so far down it anchors me. 230 pounds of muscle and I'm destroyed by half an ounce of paper. Six years, Mila. We've been together since the end of freshman year, knew each other from the minute we were born, and her plan is to leave me without even saying goodbye. I know. I can't stand to see her, so I turn my back on her, flicking the lighter on and off. You just stopped loving me all of a sudden? I still love you, Dane. Right, this says otherwise. Holding the passport out in front of me, I bring the flame to the corner. She crosses her arms, doubting my actions. To prove I don't give a fuck, I light the book up and watch the embers slowly catch on the navy blue jacket. Then she shouts and rushes for the glass of water on her nightstand, then chucks the whole glass at me and the fire. Droplets of water fall off my chin as she snatches it from my grasp and checks for damage. What is wrong with you? With me? I step forward. The breaths escaping between my teeth are warmer than the fire she put out. She's naked and staring me down, daring me to say things I'll never be able to take back. You're fucking leaving, Mila. Another step closer. L-E-A-V-I-N-G, I shout at the top of my lungs. She doesn't flinch or move a damn inch. 
She's holding her way out of this state between her fingers and she'll go down before someone pries it out of her hands. You've no right to speak to me like that. Right, I don't give a shit what you think. You were my first everything, Bane. The softness in her tone crushes me into a block of cinder. You are my only everything. For the longest time, it's been Dane and Mila. I don't even know who I am without you. What the fuck is that supposed to mean, I ask, despite knowing the answer. We started dating before I turned 15. She was my rock when I made my bones, when things went south with the Rosses and when mum died. It's been her and no one else all my life, and I was okay with that. Until 15 minutes ago, I'd been ready for it to be her for the rest of my life. You know what it means. Maybe I'm stupid, but I need it spelled out for me. You're a lot of things, but stupid isn't one of them. She huffs as she grabs a t-shirt from the pile of clothes I threw on the floor. You can do so much better than this life. Being a killer for a living, but you want this. The disgust in her tone seizes my tongue. The muscles in my jaw tick like the gears in a tightly wound clock. This again. I'm 21, Dane. You asked my father if you could marry me. Obviously a stupid mistake. I narrow my eyes on her. Who told you that? Your brother? The little shit. As she hoops the shirt over her head, she clarified. I overheard him talking about the plans for tomorrow with my mother. It's not his fault. No one told me anything. She bought the ticket to run away from me. I swooped the sheet up and checked the date, confirming my suspicion. Yesterday. You're a bitch. Ignoring my comment, she bends down and grabs another piece of expensive looking lace. I'm moving, changing my name and starting afresh. I got the spot to entice. You think I'd let that happen? My eyes lagged on her beautiful figure, exploring for the last time. She hides her body behind layers of fabric and deadpans me. I don't need your permission to live my life, Dane. I could threaten her. That's what a mobster would do. But deep down, I've always known that Milana Lombardi was too pretty to go unnoticed. When she started talking about modelling, I was ready to bulldoze anyone in my path, pay to get my way, blind the man who looked at her, but she blindsided me instead. How long have you known? I get loud because I don't care who hears anymore. No one's going to turn the future syndicato boss. How long have you been planning to leave me? It wasn't easy to decide, Dane. She steps closer, lowering her voice. You're the only thing keeping me here. So you eliminate the obstacle. When I look at her, I see red. The waves of heat cramping my chest don't help. You decide to hurt me so I don't follow you and drag you back here. Because she knows I would. I chase her across the world and drag her back to me. What we have is done, she interrupts me. It's over, Dane. Not that I didn't know she was breaking up with me, but hearing it straight from her lips feels like a bullet to the gut. Good, because I'm not fucking waiting for you to get back. She lifts her chin and stares, stares me in the eyes, keeping her cool. I'm not coming back for you. This is it. This is the end of Dale, Dane and Mila. I wish that hurt you as much to say as it hurt me to hear. I shove the receipt at her chest and she takes it, brushing her fingers over the thin hairs at the back of my wrist. With a quick withdrawal, I'm down on the bottom level, grabbing my phone and forcing myself not to look back. Normally I lash out, pummel my fists into a man's flesh until the air hits warm blood on my knuckles. But this is Mila, daughter of Syndicato, Fausto Lombardi's baby girl. The woman I love more than I love anyone, myself included. She's the only option I have is to hurt her as much as she hurt me.